Hello, everybody. Hello and welcome to a new episode of AI and EDU. Today, we're talking with women leaders as they share their stories. My name is Anne Cosma. I'm an educator innovation lead at Microsoft on the learning team. And I am thrilled to have you joining us today as I host this truly inspiring session as part of our celebration of Women's History Month. Today, we're exploring the vast possibilities of AI and also meeting some incredible women who are leading the way in this field. Our guests, Becky Keen and Dr. Saba Kidwai, are visionary thought leaders who have harnessed the power of AI to transform educational practices. They are empowering others who are beginning their own AI explorations. And these two women are inspiring the next generation of innovators. As we delve into their journeys, we're gonna uncover the skills that led to their success, learn about maybe some challenges they've overcome and the barriers they've broken through. And this event is more than just a conversation. We want it to be interactive too. So please engage, use the chat. Ask Saba and Becky your questions or let us know your insights or your own aha moments and share your own journey with AI. And if you wish, please share on social too. We would love to get connected and keep the conversation going. Give a shout out to your school district. Be sure to tag us using at Microsoft Flip and connect with our guests too. So for folks listening in, whether you are a student eager to learn about artificial intelligence, or you're an educator looking to inspire your class, or one who is simply curious about the future of technology, you are in the right place. It's time to discover how AI can not only transform our world, but also how we can inspire and empower women to lead the charge. Thank you for being here. Let's get started. So friends, our first guest believes that cultures of innovation begin with a culture of empathy. And her journey took her from being a high school teacher to an education executive at Apple. Dr. Saba Kidwai now works with organizations to design schools that give young people the mindset and the skills to thrive in workplaces and as global citizens. You might know Saba from her podcast, Designing Schools, or her 2020 documentary about using design thinking to prepare for a world with AI. Please help me welcome Dr. Saba Kidwai. Hello, hello. Hi, friend. I am so excited to be here. Listen, we're thrilled to have you. I cannot wait for you to share your insight, your expertise, your innovative ideas. It is an honor to have you, Saba. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Awesome. So we're going to introduce our next guest and we'll bring you right back. Okay. Don't go too far. Next up, I want to welcome another visionary leader. Becky Keen is the director of Insight to Execution, a phenomenal organization empowering teachers through tech integration, professional development, and Becky is one of the authors of Sail the Seven Seas with Microsoft Education. Becky, it's stories from around the world to transform and inspire classrooms, and I love that. I know you're a global speaker, a rogue educator, and someone who is passionate about play and game-based learning, too. Welcome, Becky. We're so glad to have you here. Thanks, Anne. It's an honor to join the conversation today. I mean, I'm pinching myself to have you both here as my guests and sharing. I can't wait for you to share what's in your head and your heart all about the transformative power of AI. Thank you for being here. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get Saba back up because I feel so lucky, friends. I have this incredible privilege of hosting you today. And you're both dear friends from many, many years, but also colleagues in the field of technology and women in tech who I respect and admire. And this is Women's History Month. I know many classrooms are tuning in, Folks are watching or will watch on demand and everybody has had some sort of woman who has influenced their life. I wanna start the conversation by asking, who is somebody you admire or a woman perhaps who's influenced you personally or professionally? Becky, why don't you start? Well, uh, there were so many to choose from and I'm thankful that you prepped this question with us ahead of time so I could think about it. Um, but someone I'm currently looking up to is Amanda Bickerstaff and she, 
has launched this Women in AI community on Slack. Um, last I saw, it was over 700 women in 20 time zones. And everyone that's a part of that group has been so uplifting, respectful, really digging into hard conversations with a, a woman's voice that is very strategic and intentional. And I just appreciate her because she is there championing innovation and best practices, but also uplifting women in this growing community. Oh, I love hearing that. Thank you, Becky, for sharing. Saba, I'm curious, who's the influence in your life? You know, these days, I have to say it's Dr. Fei-Fei Li. And one of the things that really, really, really inspires me about her is her story because she shares like, you know, if you don't know her, she's like, you know, like the reason we have so much of the AI technology that we do today, but she literally credits all of her success and the beginning of her journey to her uh, math teacher in high school. But the struggles that she shares, like today you would look at her, like she's so brilliant. You would never imagine that somebody like her went through so many of the struggles that we see today kids go through and the difference that a teacher can make. And so every time I like think about her and her story, it just really humanizes not only sort of technology, but also how we should approach each other and just like who matters, why people matter and the interactions that we have with each other. And so her story is just, it just really, really, really inspires me to stay grounded and focus on um, why, you know, education and teachers and our industry like really, really matters and the impact we can have. Oh my gosh, I love hearing that and both of your responses. And the piece I'm picking up on too is that human element, like the power of people, the power of connections and collectively the way learning happens together, we're better for it, right? So y'all y'all know I had to do this. I had to go and ask Copilot, what are the top 10 most inspiring quotes to share during Women's History Month? So folks listening in, we have a very quick video. We're gonna play it right now. Notice we are asking, who are the top 10 most inspiring quotes to share during Women's History Month? And that return, you see, right? A thought partner right along with you with the power of AI. I love thinking through this with Copilot, but I also love hearing the human responses. Thank you, Saba and Kidwai. Thank you, Becky Keen. Appreciate so much. Let's go ahead and hop back on screen. So just that quick demo, right? The power of like co-pilot or an AI as a thought partner. And y'all, I want to jump right into this because that was just a quick example of, of getting some information or finding a source of inspiration. But Saba, I know you passionately believe a culture of innovation begins with a culture of empathy. So I want to start off the first question and asking you, how do you use AI for personal or professional work, and what skills are essential for AI success? Oh my gosh, what is the better question is what don't you use it for? And it's really sort of like moments like these and like more connection because, you know, I always share, I think the easiest thing to do that also I feel like not enough people do is to actually assess where are you spending all of your time? right? Yeah. Like where is the majority of your time going? It was so interesting. Grammarly did such a great report. And basically they shared that when it comes to like business communication, we spend about 20 of the 40 hours a week on written communication. Oh, wow. So you can only imagine, even if you could get that number, that's 20 hours down to 10 hours, imagine what you could do. Like that's a little more than an entire workday for a full week. So that's wow. really kind of like where I write, like to start, what are the tasks that are consuming you? Not just maybe like, because they're really big projects, but also like the mental stress that comes from so many, what should I write? What should I say? Did I pick the perfect word? Like all of these little things that we spend our time in. And that empathy component is really where Spark comes from because, you know, we don't want to fall into that substitution trap that we fell into for so like over the past decade, you know? And so what Spark really aims to do is, you know, really before you sit down with your AI tool, it helps you prompt the human before the machine. You know, what is the situation that you're in? I like, you know, for example, like I'm an educator and I'm feeling really overwhelmed with like, you know, the grade that I'm teaching right now. Maybe you're like doing 10th grade English and I'm really stressed about AI, right? Like that's my problem. I'm stressed. I don't know how to use it. I'm not sure is this going to take my job away or my kids all just going to start cheating. 
So you like you kind of frame the situation, the problem, and then you go into the aspiration. Like if everything went really well for you, like what would that look like? Like why do you do what you do? Like my aspiration is for all kids to be, you know, engaged in writing and for us to just come to class and have exciting discussions where we're debating and we're engaging in critical thinking and analysis. And maybe the results you want to see is like a 50% increase, right? In like mm -hmm. the amount of analysis or debate or conversation or engagement that's taking place in your class. And then last but not least in this framework, like as we're designing our prompt is what I call Kismet. And this is where you go and you ask ChatGPT for a little bit of that serendipity, right? It's like almost like imagine like if the three of us were just like at a coffee shop, right? Like we've done so many times in real life where we're like sharing a situation, a problem, like why we really care about something, what it is, what results we're hoping for. And then the other person will like say something that sparks an idea. And you're like, oh my God, I never thought about that. Or, okay, I can see that. And what if I also do X, Y, Z? And I think that serendipity is really like definitely not ever replaceable. Like there's just something so unique about that human serendipity, but it can definitely be replicated in some ways with these AI tools where they just help you spark possibilities and ideas and help you get unstuck with um, something that you might be either struggling with or trying to solve for. So that's sort of where Spark came from, that just framework to prompt humans, like talk to people and engage with them around their problems, their frustrations, but also their hopes and dreams, and then go to your AI tool to see what it can bring. I love that so much. And that idea of the framework, I think everybody's sort of like, hey, prompt engineering and the way that you prompt the AI to respond, that is a critical piece. And so it was so awesome to get to hear you share about this framework. Of, of course, folks can find that framework or dig into it. I know on your website a little bit deeper, but getting to hear you talk about it like that I mean, that's awesome. And that kismet piece, like there's this beautiful opportunity waiting to unfold, right? All right, Becky, I know you're literally like speaking all over the world about Microsoft Copilot. And I want to know your response here too. I can't wait to hear how do you use AI for personal or professional work? And what are some of those skills that you think are essential for AI success? So I... I agree with Saba. What are we not using it for? Um, I've been using generative AI at least daily, you know, several times a day for well over a year. And and now I don't know how I would work without it. It's one of those things that once you start using it all the time, you know, like a calculator or an editor, you realize like this is a now a part of my productivity suite. It's how I get my work done. Um, and one thing that I've noticed that I'll share is that I... I am a concise communicator and writer, and, and that doesn't work for everyone. And so using Copilot to kind of levity my content and, and you know, add some adjectives and I'll use the word soften even has been really well received by um, some of the people in my space. I'm having it help write communications, newsletters, and, and I'm actually getting positive feedback around, oh, I loved the intro to the newsletter, it made me feel good in my heart. And I'm like, that's awesome, because it's not how I would naturally communicate. And so it's allowing me to actually reach different groups of people in new ways. Mm -hmm. So I put together this graphic on Copilot because I, one of my heart's desires in this world of generative AI is for people to help understand that Copilot and the other generative AI tools that are available are not just there to help regurgitate information that already exists. They really are there to help us level up. They can, they can take those productivity and efficiency tax off our plate, but they can do so much more than that and give us insights. Um, sometimes Saba would call them kismet on things that we didn't see possible before, things that weren't even in our, our eco world system, right? It was like, oh, this is a completely new idea that, that no one has brought to me before. And so that's that create analyze level of understanding. Mm -hmm. where sometimes Copilot gives me way more information than I needed. And, and sometimes I ask it to reduce its response. And other times that's a good thing because it's allowing me to build connections and bridges and see multiple perspectives that I didn't have as a part of my own background and skill set. The other I, part of this, sorry. I'm just no, like no, I want to hear it. Forward. I want to hear it. Okay. The other part of this graphic that I just cannot say enough um, is the right side. Um, and that is fact checking um, and checking for accuracy and using those critical thinking skills to 
ask generative AI for multiple perspectives, for contrasting information, following those source links to do mm -hmm. lateral reading and figuring out where is the information coming from? Because the reality is if the information is online, it's going to appear in a generative response. So, you know, following that information up to check for accuracy is paramount and teaching our students those skills of checking sources for reliability and accuracy has been happening for over 20 years. So now we get to continue that work in our generative AI tools. Yeah. And I love that you said that. And I see Saba nodding and too, knowing that like as educators, as we're talking about these tools that can help level up, that can spark mm -hmm. all kinds of new possibilities. But what are we doing with it? And the human brain power that we're bringing into it to fact right. check, to source check, to determine like we're driving the learning and these tools are powerful supports and assistance to drive that forward in all kinds of new ways. Thank you, Becky. I'm I'm so glad like kept going. And that's why we're that's why we're having this conversation. You too. I want to hear all the things from you. And I already I, know we're not going to have enough time for the conversation. No, I really loved what you said because you know one of the things that I feel like, especially with women or, you know, I mean, people in general, but I feel like with women, especially people talk so much about imposter syndrome, you know, mm -hmm. and you think about growing up when you're younger, how many times you can't communicate those things that give you anxiety or those things that you yeah. feel you can't do, or the things that you see other people doing and just silently in your head, you're like, how did they do that? I want to do something like that. But not knowing how to articulate that to me, that co-pilot ad at the Super Bowl was so in one minute. Oh. It encapsulates, I think, how so many people feel because you're constantly told more what you can't do versus mm -hmm. what it is you can do. And I think these tools, like that is the biggest thing I feel like they've done for me. And like, I hope they do for everybody else is like that time when you get that thought in your head, when you feel that imposter syndrome, no matter what age you're at coming on, having just something in front of you that just shows you what you can do or how you can take those steps. It's so fascinating to me to watch people sometimes even put that to the side and just have this renewed sense of confidence that just wasn't even there 30 seconds ago as a result of using these tools. Because not everyone has a mentor sitting no. down the hallway from them. And so I love that we're talking about that conversation as these tools bring equity, equity and inclusion to kids everywhere and adults who are able to then use a virtual assistant yeah. to guide them in a way that maybe they didn't have a human, you know? Yeah. And so that is then allowing them to even start a conversation with a real person, which is still incredibly important. Um, so it, it's just this scaffold, this step forward that is building confidence in a lot of ways. So I want to ask then, speaking of like stepping forward and scaffolding, like we have an educator comment already from Instagram and I want to, I want to weave it into this question because I'm curious about like the current and the emerging trends that you're seeing with AI in education. And I, I want to know what you're excited about, but this educator is asking about project-based learning activities. And this is typically like for high school students. I hope there are a lot of high school students watching and listening right now because you're building the future and you're learning the future. So Becky, do you want to start us off and maybe what are you excited about emerging trends and any PBL ideas? I, well, I'm extremely excited about AI, and I've said this already, as a, a mode to explore multiple perspectives. I think that it's really exciting. So um, I don't know what content this teacher is teaching or where in the world this teacher is joining from, but if you have an opportunity in the history of your country, for example, that there was a conflict, your students can be asking Copilot to present a case from either side of that conflict, from maybe an elderly um, person in the region or from a young person in the region, giving those multiple perspectives of something that happened in history, pulling from primary sources, we can lateral read from Copilot and giving us an opportunity to understand really what happened from those differing viewpoints, I think is an incredibly exciting activity. And then for students to be able to synthesize and present those multiple perspectives in a cohesive package, maybe that allows them to become change makers, to be reaching out to their community with information about something that happened in the past and, and a way that they're looking forward to the future to not regenerate those same problems again. 
Um, I think that's incredibly exciting. I also think image generation is I'm, I'm unimaginably powerful. I'm stumbling over that word because of the power of visual storytelling and the opportunity that these students have to create imagery to support ideas that didn't previously exist. Um, I will caveat that image generation is still very much a moving target and something that we're still looking to safeguard in education. So even with high school students, making sure that parents are aware if you're using image generation tools, making sure that your students you know, are working in a safe environment, um, like a co-pilot data protected space. But I think the way that students are able to then use those images to show their stories, to show their understanding, and to empower their presentations is incredibly exciting. Okay, so I just have to pop back on screen and Saba, I definitely wanna hear your insight too, but um, JB, can we get up that image real quick? Uh, see yourself oh. in AI. Becky, I have this queued up because this is something that you shared at BET over in London recently, yes. but also kind of went viral on social. Can it you did. talk about this for a minute? Absolutely. So just quickly, go check this out, everyone, if you're interested. It lands you, this URL lands you at Microsoft Designer, free account, access for over 13 with parent permission, over 18, of course, just as an adult. Um, but these are examples. This is my buddy, Joe Brazier, um, who works with Microsoft and me, our See Yourself in AI. But what I love about this template approach to Designer is giving kids this fill in the blank experience where they're able to customize and build maybe themselves or maybe who they dream they could be. And, and that's powerful as well. So go try this out, have fun with it. Please feel free to share on social and tag us. Oh my gosh, yeah. And Saba, I have to ask about the, the current, the emerging trends, like your take on what are you so excited about AI and education right now? Oh my God, so many things. You know what I've really noticed an interesting thing? I'll talk very specifically in this one about skills in terms of the emerging trends we're seeing is I'm noticing we are like so many groups that we typically follow, right? Like LinkedIn, top trending skills, work, World Economic Forum, top trending skills. I'm seeing people move away from the more blanket creative thinking, analytical thinking to really, really, really granular specifics. Adaptability is what LinkedIn named as like at the top of like the skills that people are looking for in 2024, like no surprise there, right? But the other one that I thought was really interesting was the World Economic Forum just did one. And so many of them were character traits, integrity. Like it was so fascinating. 78% of CEOs, they said of everyone they surveyed, said that integrity was like the number one skill they were looking for in people. And I think the reason for that is, you know, with these AI tools, it's we, the biggest transition we're seeing, like this is a huge trend that we're going to see shift in another direction is we're going away from like this rules-based approach that worked for so long where you could monitor, you could control, you could see, you could like pinpoint what was happening where, turn it in dot coms of the world and things like that to a very, very, very gray space where integrity literally is going to be the most important thing between people deciding, should I do this or should I not do this? When there's sort of no way to really kind of pinpoint and kind of zone in on that kind of accountability that we are normally used to. And, and I think that's a really big shift in how we talk to people, how we talk with people, if we, everything from like our syllabuses to our rules, to our guides, that culture of like being able to really connect and like build on those rapport and relationships is going to become absolutely essential. So I think that's a very interesting trend at this very specificity of skills that we're starting to see. And I did want to touch on this, like, because this is the question that just like, honestly, like, like just puts my soul on like, just blast because I... There are so many people like that example that she shared, right? Like I am a high school teacher. I want to do more project-based learning. It's like the desire that like so many people have are these aspirations. And I just want to share that like that is literally what the Spark framework is perfect for. Because when you go in and you're like, okay, like what is your current situation? Maybe like I'm a high school teacher. I've got like this many classes. Um, but my problem is like I'm super overwhelmed. I have to stick to the standards. These are all the things I'm required to do. But my aspiration is I want to be more fun. I want to do projects with my kids. I want to have them engage like Becky shared in like real world issues and things like that. I just want a three day lesson. I've got 50 minutes per period. What might that look like? And the way that we can take just that entire 
thing that's in our head, frame it up as a prompt, you know, and get that response. That is your initial trigger for being able to be like, oh my God, okay, yeah, you know, I like that idea. Okay, that wouldn't work for us, but let me keep prompting. Could we do this? Oh, what about this idea? And once you're in a place where you've kind of like got that alignment down, being able to be like, all right, great, build out this lesson plan. Um, I want to share it with my other colleagues. Like, how could I share this out with them? And then also thinking about like a lot of people I notice like sometimes stop the conversation. Like you can keep going. Like if there was ever a time to be super demanding, like this is it, you know, like sky's <laughs> the limit with what you can ask for. I need a rubric to go with this so that students can self-assess. I need some directions for giving kids strategies on how to work together in groups and manage projects together. Um, what are some time management strategies I can share? Like, how should my grading adjust? Like, oh, by the way, we have a learner profile. How could I integrate some of these elements? So there's so many different things we can do when we kind of begin by first identifying what our goals and what our outcomes are, and then going in and kind of designing that prompt. But to me, the project-based learning, the design thinking experiences, while also making the transition from like the standards and things that we're accountable to is little, like is one of just my most favorite activities and prompts to try because the results are, I mean, they're incredible. Yeah, and we, we have a thank you from this educator. Thank you for answering the questions, both of you. But I think there's so much value in hearing just your ideas, your insights. Saba, talking about that word integrity and how that literally is a skill they're looking for. But I think in our own journeys, we've learned that, you know, the AI, and I'm using co-pilot specifically, but it is my co-pilot. It is the assistant. It is meant to thought partner. It is meant to have a conversation extended. And you just said that, like, be demanding in what you're asking of it yeah, because that. it transforms what you're getting back, right? I love those thoughts. Thank you. Okay, friends, I have to ask, like, it's Women's History Month and you know, all these like awareness months and recognition around the world, this is about women and the impact women over history have made, but it doesn't come without barriers or, you know, opportunities to overcome something. So I'm curious, and I kind of want to mix two questions together and ask about opportunities and barriers you've faced in your career, but also for young women and people who are interested in pursuing careers in technology or specifically AI, like insights or encouragement for, for the young people. So I guess this is a reflective and a forward thinking question. And Saba, I don't know if you want to jump into this one first. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, you know, I would say, first of all, for opportunity, the one thing I always think about, so what's so interesting, I find like, when I reflect back on my journey is, I graduated as a student during like, what I would consider to be like our last big inflection point, which was like the iPhone, like mobility, like, I mean, it really it changed everyone's lives. Like there's nothing that you don't do today that isn't impacted by mobility, the app store and all of these things that are such normal streamlined technologies. And at that time, I remember I was the total opposite of who I am now, but I, but I'm the same person. And so the idea that like, we have these skills and these strengths within us, but we need that like catalyst or that opportunity to help somebody help have like, have the right scenario in the right environments where you can discover what those are, which doesn't happen overnight. They happen in a series of different events, right? Like it takes a while. And so I think when you think about like, you know, women, like no matter what age you're at, but I think especially when you're younger, like our responsibility sort of like in education is to help people uncover these skills and strengths and passions and just things that they enjoy much, much, much faster. Like we should not be doing this work in our twenties and our thirties and our forties. And like the years that you see people really kind of, um, dig into this. So that's one big thing I would say with the opportunity is how do we help people discover those things about themselves and, you know, really enhance and nurture those abilities within themselves earlier. And then from a barrier perspective, I mean, there's like so many, <laughs> so many, but one of the things that I would say can really over help you come overcome a barrier. Okay. Because if you start looking at it in a very granular lens, oh, I have this problem, this problem, this problem, it's very hard to sort of do it. And it can be very defeating as well. Well, the one thing I have found that can help you overcome just about any single barrier is a really, really, really strong 
online presence, a place where you have owned your space, no matter what platform, no matter what area it is. You know, I always sort of say like that LinkedIn is the best place to start because it's like, you don't have to worry about bringing an audience in or anything at all. You can start right when you're in high school, but I think having a space where you own your narrative, where you own the work that you do and you have a reputation around things that you do allows you to sort of already have a network of people who are not just your cheerleaders, but are your support and are your friends. Like, I mean, all of us, all three of us here today met because we're online. Every single engagement I find myself in, it begins with, oh, we started because we shared something online. We did something online. We met somebody online. So I think that network of people that comes from you owning your own story, your own presence, which takes time to nurture and kind of grow, um, can help you overcome any of the barriers that come your way. And Saba, that's something that I know and love and respect so much about you is how you have advocated for positive online, like a presence and own your brand and who are you and what do you believe in and what do you stand for and what are you building and creating? And I have heard that narrative and that example and inspiration from you for years. And it is something that is so fabulously consistent in your message. So thank you for sharing that. And all the young people out there listening in, like you own your story and let the world know your story in the most positive ways. And I'm going to pull on that word integrity again, too, because these are the skills that future, you know, future workplace, your future boss is looking for. That's such a dynamic answer. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And Becky, I, I'm so curious, too, about that mix of overcoming and the barriers you faced and then the encouragement and, and word for, for the young people listening. And I'd love to hear from you. Well, some barriers I've noticed, one is just misrepresentation of AI. Um, it feels scary. It feels new. It feels different. Um, Ethan Mullick has told us, us as a community, stop using words like magic. Stop using words like human. Um, it's not. It's not either one. And so just helping people demystify and understand what the technology is actually doing and how it can support them, I think is, is a big part of where we're seeing some challenges. I think lack of representation is a big deal. Um, at the decision-making level, there aren't enough women in STEM fields. We know that historically, there are especially aren't enough women in the AI C level um, of lots of companies. And, and those corporations, whether they have you know, my best interest in mind or not, are still making decisions that impact me as a user and as a champion. And so it's important to have those multiple perspectives in the room. Um, so misrepresentation, lack of representation, and finally under representation of women, especially in the imagery field that I mentioned earlier. Um, we're seeing that again, because AI is looking at existing data sets, it's under representing or misrepresenting again, um, all sorts of demographics. And one thing that I find especially concerning is the evidence we've seen just recently, and, and DM me if you want this article, I will send it back to you. It's also in my Wakelet collections, but the evidence we're seeing that AI is actually generating underrepresenting underrepresenting um, people in different groups. So for example, if women represent 40% of all judges in the United States. I'm just picking a field. If I ask AI to generate an image of a judge, it's going to represent women 3% of the time, for example. So massively underrepresenting even in its generations. And we would hope that it would at least be um, a, you know, a fair representation in that. So really, really fascinating to see those barriers coming up um, for, for our different demographics and women included. What I would say is an opportunity is that information is free. We now are working and living in a space where over and over um, we find that people can learn at huge levels. Um, they can implement new information. They can create chatbots. They can you know, build whole websites. They can build whole networks without paying for any training, without going to a formal institution. And so I love that Saba hit community because that would be one of my answers as well. Community and content. Those opportunities are freely available to anyone anywhere um, who has an internet connection that is critical. So internet connection is a big deal there. But from mobile, from any device, 
people can be learning and growing and connecting wherever they are at whatever level they choose. Um, and so with that, we have a very important responsibility to be providing correct information in AI and then to be fact checking that information. We, we cannot just assume that anything we're getting out of Copilot is correct. It's incredibly important. We had a question about this in the chat uh, that we follow that up with understanding where that information came from and, and is it correct and accurate. Yeah, wow, I love that and appreciate it so much. And, and talking about, I think that piece, like we live in a highly connected digital world, but understanding the information. And when you said like taking out a word like magic, like the technology understanding how it's working, how it's helping, that's a critical piece that I think all of us are just gonna only mm -hmm. continue to understand as we learn and use AI more. Wow. That was fascinating to me. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Well, I have to ask, I know we're coming close on time. I'm going to sneak in one more question. So think of this as like a bonus round. Okay. I'm so curious as we think about the future, what do you hope to achieve with AI in the future? And that could be a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, I don't know, take it however you want. And what do you hope to achieve with AI in the future? Saba, why don't you take this one first? <laughs> wow, I get all the hard questions first. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna be so honest in this one because honestly, this is what drives so much of my work. I don't think it's so much what I hope to achieve. I think it's what we hope to achieve. And mm -hmm. when I look at the world right now, I think we are so deeply broken. We are so deeply broken on just about every single level from classrooms to world conflicts. And so much of that is our own choices. Like this entire week, like, you know, for the, uh, the last two weeks, every single school I've walked into, kids are in classes training for tests, like literally doing the very things mm -hmm. that like robots have like exceeded in. And I always say, you know, like we're changing assessment faster for machines than we are for humans. Mm -hmm. And I think the one thing I really, really collectively hope for just all around is that we are able to realize that the things that we have today are things that somebody once just created. They're not rules we have to stick by. They're not laws that are set in stone. Like we get to literally create what it is we want. And sometimes that can feel so overwhelming and so big and so much like, what can I do? And I always tell people like, if you just did something in your space with the people that you interact with on a daily basis, like even if it's just like for every single person who's here, this seems so small, but it's so powerful. For every single person who's here, you chances are the next lunch you go to, the next dinner you go to, you know, your friends and family have no clue about this conversation. Maybe they've tried it. Maybe they've used it for a poem. Maybe they've used something to create a joke or something fun, but they have not made the connection to what this means for them in their role, their jobs, their profession, and, and their life. Um, and so I really just... I really just hope like we realize, I think the gravity of this moment is this is about so much more than generating text and images mm -hmm. and the things that we are very into right now, because that's what we have as being most accessible. But this is about like the type of world we want to live in and the type of people we want to be. Like I said, at a time when you can't really pinpoint who did what, who did things where, whether it's like, you know, the images we're seeing of Taylor Swift, like there's so many things we have not worked on for so long that now to have to like compensate for that like last 20 years all in like the next mm. one to two years is not going to be easy by any means. But I think people stepping up to say, I want a different way. I'm not going to do another year of my kids spending two months in classrooms prepping for tests because it's going to get them nowhere. And so we need a different way and we need people to come together in their communities to advocate for a different way forward. Um, so that we do not create an insane economic um, and social divide. Yeah, Saba, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate coming together for a way forward. And that answer was, I mean, brilliant, poignant, powerful, but also gives me hope for all the young people listening in, like, you know, the new skills they're learning and gaining and, and building forward. So that the future can be better for everybody. Thank you for sharing that perspective. Becky, I'd love, I, I wanna know, like dreaming about the future or what can you or we collectively, however you wanna answer it, your excitement about the future with AI. Well, two, two, 
two things I would love to say, and of course, it's going to piggyback on what Sava said, because we often are talking about and advocating for a lot of the same things. But one of my hopes is that my voice can help teachers see the possibilities that that we can move from a space where we're so excited to generate another worksheet or another quiz or another writing assignment that we can move into a space where we understand the power of what's possible and give teachers permission to leave some of those didactic mind numbing activities behind and allow students to move forward with what will be things that they're excited about in their own futures and being able to connect those things with the standards they're required to meet, as Saba pointed out earlier, is incredibly important to me. And so just being an advocate and a champion is something that I have committed to for a very long time with 21st century learning design and transformational classrooms and those types of things. And I think AI is, is one of the most exciting things I've seen to be able to do that since we integrated the internet into classrooms. And so, very exciting for me. I'm full of hope, and that's something teachers can do tomorrow. Um, e you know, even if their school system is blocking, filtering, editing, uh, there are all sorts of tools that teachers can use to to kind of level up and help open things up for students. And so, to wrap that up, what I would love to see, I will tell a story about a young woman in my life who happens to share my DNA. Um, I was driving with my daughter, who's 13 in the car the other day and she had finished playing uh the the a daily puzzle on her phone in an app and she was like man i wish i could practice more of these and i didn't say a word but she thought about it for about 10 seconds and then she went oh i could just build one with copilot couldn't i she oh, pulled out her pulled back out her phone started asking copilot to build her another version of the same game and within like a five minute drive through iterative prompting refining her prompting she was able to get copilot to emulate the game she was playing and, and that's i think she's brilliant but that's not because she's brilliant it's because the tool was available ubiquitous and accessible and so i just have this hope in education that we can get there for all kids everywhere um, where they're empowered to just do what needs to be done. Um, and, and that type of learning is something that will impact her far greater than, you know, a quiz about the state capitals. So that's my hope, is that I can use my voice to help um, empower another generation. Okay, wow, wow, wow. I mean, both of you, the responses blew like me away, but Becky, hearing you just say now, like doing this for all kids everywhere, like that is something as Truly. educators we all want. And um, I just keep coming back to and knowing both of you and, and listening to your responses, like I'm so honored to have had you both join us today and share your insights, share your expertise and, and share your, you know, the learning journeys, but also your hopes for the future. It's been so powerful. And I don't want this conversation to end. So I'm just putting it out there. Let's have a part two somewhere in the future. I'd love to have you both back. Um, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you for sharing. It's been an honor to have you. And I have to ask before we go, how can folks keep learning with and from you. We have your websites we're going to share. So let's get that up. Becky, let us know how can folks keep learning with and from you? Uh, my website is a great landing point because it links to, if you scroll like halfway, partway past the photo, every social media platform. So just feel free, right, to connect with me at any of those places or just subscribe. Um, I put out a newsletter. I put out a different things. Just today, I launched a Play AI Build Challenge. People can join that um, where we're going to be actually competing like esports with prompting in the month of April. So to come join me on that. Um, that'll be really fun. So yeah, my website's a great landing place. Um, I always joke my name um, is uncommon enough where if you just do a web search for me, I'll come up. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Becky. Folks, get connected. You can find her at beckykeen.com. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Saba, we have your website too. Let us know how folks can stay in touch. 
Oh, right there at the top, right. I always say like, it's like a choose your own adventure, whatever kind of platform right. you enjoy consuming on. We're on all of them. Um, we do have a quiz. If you scroll down, it's like one of my favorite things that we just added to the site where there's so many people who are like, what's my next step? What can I do? They're not entirely sure how to get there. And I believe it's the next little header that's there. We have a quiz you can take. It gives you three steps, places you kind of does a full assessment of your current AI skill set and where you're at and gives you a little roadmap for how you can move forward heading into the future. Um, but I also want to give you a huge shout out, Anne, because I've just, yeah. you know, I've known you for like over a decade now. And I think, you know, because every single part of our conversation today goes back to one thing, and that is I would never be doing what I'm doing today if it wasn't for people like you and like people like Becky. And so I just want to give you a huge shout out because your energy and enthusiasm, and this is such an important thing I think for everyone to have in mind as you navigate change, because it can be overwhelming. There's like so many barriers, you know, but people with like your energy and your enthusiasm, like you can feel it, even if you're not speaking to them, just in the tweet and the way they communicate and the way they write. There's so many ways to connect emotionally with people beyond just like face to face. And you are like one of the people that just like consistently <laughs> brings this energy to every single place you go. And so I'm so grateful to have you in my life and to, you know, just be able to have these ongoing opportunities because of literally being able to connect with people online. I think that's, I hope that's the biggest thing that people take away from today. Thank you so much that and, and I mean, I'm looking at the two of your faces on screen and I feel so thankful that like our personal and professional journeys, they are literally years. Saba, you and I are coming up on 10 years of being connected. <laughs> Becky, we're not at 10 years yet, but we're definitely over five. Yeah. And that to me speaks to not only a better together approach to learning, but we're lifelong learners and it's a journey and seasons the flux of all of the overlap of community is this beautiful journey. And I love having these conversations with educators and folks listening in today, whether you're live, thank you for being here, whether you're finding it in the future, like we're learning together, no matter what age we are, but also as educators, our heart is to help develop our students for the future. Right. I used to tell my first graders, you're going to make the decisions. You're going to make the laws. You're going to be the doctors. You're going to be the, you know, the people working that I engage with when I'm a little old lady. So I want you to build your brain power. And no matter what age, I just I thank you both for this conversation and getting to hear from the two of you. It's it's been phenomenal. And I'm going to start planning part two. So get ready. <laughs> Oh well, my gosh. That's amazing. I respect you both so much. So I appreciate the conversation and I'm so glad we could share these messages with the world. Absolutely. That feeling is completely mutual. I cannot thank you enough for joining me, for sharing your stories, your insights and folks, you know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Dr. Saba Kidwai and Becky Keen. We appreciate you. What an honor to have you both here today. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And folks, as we get ready to wrap this event, wow. I mean, my mind is tingling in the best way. I just, I have to wrap this up by sharing a few resources and Microsoft has these available for you and your community. We are here to help you, to help your students make deeper and more personal learning connections, especially with history. Now, as we celebrate Women's History Month and celebrating the extraordinary achievements of women, but the next generation of leaders as well. So definitely check out what Microsoft has recently shared with the Reimagine Education event. You'll gain insights on education equity, security, and workforce readiness in the area in the era of AI from global innovators who share their next practices. Please check it out. You can find it at aka.ms slash Reimagine education and be sure to download that Microsoft Education AI Toolkit. This was created for education leaders to provide knowledge strategies, recommendations for effective and responsible AI use and your learning journey with it. So you'll learn about those AI solutions from Microsoft that enhance your outcomes, boost efficiency, make education organizations more secure, accessible and inclusive. Please, please, please check it out, aka.ms slash reimagine education. 
And folks, I know one of our guests, Becky, helped author some of these. These are incredible Microsoft Learn courses. It's a series of educator center trainings to help you learn how to use AI. So whether you're just getting started or you're digging deeper in your own AI learning journey, please see these. They're a phenomenal resource. You'll find various offerings like equip and support learners with AI tools from Microsoft, or even how to enhance teaching and learning with Microsoft Copilot. And you can find all of those at aka.ms slash AI in education. And I can't not share Minecraft. You know, there's an incredible opportunity to learn with Good Trouble Women's Suffrage. This is an awesome lesson all about the global history of how women gained the right to vote. You can find this resource and so many more Minecraft resources at education.microsoft.net. And you know we've got upcoming conversations. We have more AI and EDU conversations. So please save the date for April 17 para el ABC de Microsoft Copilot con Vincent Gadea Aprende, Busca y Crea. Solo en Español. Friends, this will be a phenomenal conversation on April 17. And on May 8, we welcome George Valenzuela to discuss streamlining instruction with Microsoft Copilot. June 12, save the date, Matt Miller is joining us for a special Q&A all about a vision for an artificial intelligence future. Folks, I can't recommend this enough. Register for these upcoming events because you'll have the link sent directly to your email inbox. You'll even get a link for a watching on demand after. There you have it, friends. The last thing I want to share, please, please, please join us at our flip.com Microsoft Copilot group. We have this group where we're sharing all of our events, the resources that are shared in this group from all of our AI and EDU series. You can find the previous events and also a topic for today. So we want to hear from you. Feel free to share a quote from a woman that inspires you. Consider using Copilot to help you in your response. And we'd love to hear from you. Folks, that's it. Wow, what a brilliant conversation. Thank you so much for sticking around and listening in. Thank you again to Dr. Saba Kidwai and Becky Keene, our esteemed guests for sharing their insights, their expertise, their thought leadership, and their hopes for future and what it might look like with AI. On behalf of Microsoft, I want to say thank you so much for joining us for this AI and EDU series, and we cannot wait to see you at the next event. Bye, everybody. Take care.